Our Black Friday sale in my shop is one of our biggest money makers. In fact, last year we cleared over six figures, $112,812 and some change to be exact-ish. With each seasonal sale that we've offered, we have many lessons that we've learned. And I thought I'd share some of those here with you today because that way, as you're going into Black Friday, you can apply some of the lessons that we've learned and overcome those hurdles before they even become anything that is remotely an issue in your shop. So here it is, the biggest lessons, and also what we're gonna be doing this year to improve those things that kind of went a little bit awry last year. But before I get into it, if you like this video and you like flowers, make sure you're subscribed because that really means a lot for me and this channel and the YouTube algorithm. If you're new here, my name is Christina Scalera and I help you to turn your ideas into digital download products that you can then sell passively through an online storefront. I call this de-commerce as in digital commerce instead of e-commerce, which applies to things like Amazon and drop shipping and all those other kind of great passive income sources, but you know, where you have to source the product and it doesn't just come from your head for free. As I go through today's lessons, you'll wanna keep some things in mind. My shop has been fully operational since 2015 and making money since 2016 and profitable since about 2017, early 2018. So it has been quite the journey to get to where we are today, making six figures several times a year in those months. However, that doesn't mean that you should stop just because you're not automatically gonna make six figures. First of all, you possibly could. So there's always that. But second of all, wouldn't it be nice to have an extra just $100 in your pocket every single day? That's just $3,000 a month. So think about what a difference just that amount of money would make. And if you know exactly what you do with that money, I love hearing what you would spend it on. So drop that in the comments below and we can have fun and geek out over that together. This is actually going to be my, I believe my seventh Black Friday sale. Oh my gosh, that just blows my mind that I've been in business that long with my online store. And I wanna take you back to what my first Black Friday ever looked like. First of all, I think we barely cleared $24,000 in sales, which is pretty good considering that we'd run a mid-year sale that 4th of July prior and made about $7,000. So that's over tripling what our sale brought in in just a six month period, the first time, the first year I was really in business. Now I still wasn't profitable then, but I also didn't know what the heck I was doing in business. So uh, like small slash large caveat there is that I had, like I just, I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> I spent all of my money on the wrong things and I spent all of my money and I think that's enough to tell you that I, I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> Now, fast forward to the next year that I ran a Black Friday sale, which was 2017, and I knew I wanted to do it much bigger than I had in my first Black Friday sale the prior year. So what I did, I still remember this, I stayed in the office. I had all these crazy post-it notes. Like, I, I can tell you that there's like a Rio de Janeiro series of post-it note colors because that's how deep I was in all this. And I just had them all over my office, like Charlie Day style with the map that's like pointing everywhere. And I was mapping out exactly what would happen because I had done some research and figured out that I needed to do some sort of pre-sale event to get people excited and also understanding what products I sold and figuring out how those products would be applicable to them. And so what I decided to do was something that I learned a long time ago called the product launch formula from Jeff Walker. And it was just a three-part video series where I covered kind of the basics of what they would need to know. And then I sold the products in the last video actually. So the, the Black Friday sale technically in the last video. And I remember that went live around like November 12th ish, I want to say. I don't know why I remember that, but again, like so deep into that filming it, editing it all myself and just getting everybody on board to learn about the Black Friday sale coming up. Fast forward another year and we knew we wanted to top that one. And I say we at this time, cause it wasn't just me anymore. I actually had a team and we were all working together on this thing. And so we've done something called a catalog where we, 
give a, just like you would get in the mail, like old school mail catalogs. We did that, but in PDF format for our audience so that they could shop our sale because we had learned that we needed to kind of shut our site down. Like we locked and password protected it for the few days prior to Black Friday. And we did that for a few reasons. One was because we really wanted people to buy on Black Friday so that we could have this big, exciting sale. And that really built up some excitement. It also got people just like, super eager to buy and chomping at the bit because they couldn't buy. Like we literally took away that option from them, which was really risky. And um, I, I do it every year now since, but I had a lot of people, including mentors, tell me that that was the wrong move. But I knew in my gut that that was, that was gonna help us. So I tried that out and it's worked really well ever since, uh, but that was a little bit scary. So that was an addition, was locking down the shop, prior to it going live and then having a catalog available for people to shop so that even though they couldn't actually add things to their cart and check it out on Shopify, they could still look at what kind of products that we had available. Fast forward again to the next Black Friday and we had kind of been experimenting with things called doorbusters and I've covered that in other videos here on this channel, which is also why you wanna make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss all those little really good parts that I go over in detail. We were doing something called doorbuster events and so this is where we give out prizes to certain buyers. So the first buyer usually gets their order value covered and like a hundred dollar cash prize, plus like all the other things that everyone else gets, which would be, you know, the first 10 people got a session with me, like a 15 minute laser coaching session with me and you know, like a future $50 credit to the shop or something like that. And then the first like 100 buyers got, you know, $25 credit to the shop or something like that. So it was like progressive where you would really, really want to be that first buyer and everybody was trying to get that. And so we would have like a flood of orders come in right at midnight, right when the doors open for Black Friday every year. And so we've been doing that ever since. And that's really upped morale and, you know, like gotten people super excited, even more so than just like locking the shop and not making the products available for the few days prior to the sale. We've done a lot of really great things that have gone super well with the shop and our semi-annual sales to hit these big fat six-figure months. But we've also had a lot of learning lessons to get there. And luckily, because you've subscribed and smashed that like button and saw the little fun confetti that happens, if you don't believe me, just click that like button and you'll see. And what you're going to learn is how to like avoid all of these bad things that happened to us. I'm gonna go over some of the top lessons that we've learned and also what I would have done differently that you can just do differently right from the start without spending the money or the time that, or the frustration that, that I spent on these things. One of the biggest lessons that I've ever learned is about something called a fast growth event. So this is a phrase I came up with to describe exactly what I'm doing ahead of our Black Friday sale. And we do a little bit of this before the mid-year sale, but it's really important to do before your Black Friday sale, especially because everybody's doing a Black Friday sale at exactly the same time. And that can get really noisy. So how do you capture attention ahead of time so that you're not scrambling on the back end, you know, on Thanksgiving evening or whatever you celebrate or not celebrate that day, you're basically, you know, hopefully not working that day and you're going to be scrambling to get people into your shop. Like that's, that's not a good plan. So is everybody else on the planet. So how do we get that attention ahead of time? Well, the, one of the best things that you can do is using this fast growth event strategy well in advance. So when I talked about that three-part video series that I did, I mentioned that I started it on November 12th that's pretty far in advance. That was a good two weeks prior to Black Friday. So people weren't quite thinking about promoting their Black Friday sale event that early. And I've even moved it earlier as the years have gone on. So now we do our fast growth event in October, early October. And we use that to grow our list really big. And we also have 90 day commissions on our affiliates. So when an affiliate promotes that fast growth event at the beginning of October, we make sure that when that person who joined our list in early October makes a purchase during Black Friday, that affiliate is compensated. So it's really a win-win for everybody. It allows our affiliates to go about their own Black Friday sales without getting interrupted trying to promote ours. And it also allows us to grow our list really big and nurture everybody for two months prior to making a purchase during our Black Friday sale. The second hard lesson learned is about our customers. And one of the things that we've done that has taken a good amount of time 
but is so worth it is adding a chat feature to our website. And to be honest, chat really fatigues me. I don't know if it's because I'm an introvert or you know I wanna take off those days too or whatever, but one of the things that I've found that's just a shortcut hack to being really available in chat, but also having a life and taking a holiday for yourself is making sure that you schedule when the emails for your Black Friday sale, when they're going live, you schedule them onto your calendar. So you know exactly, you know, at 11 a.m. on Saturday, you have an email. At 9 p.m. on Saturday, you have an email. And you're just gonna jump into chat at those times because that's when people are gonna be most active and interested in chatting with you because you just reminded them about your Black Friday sale and that things are going on. Chat can get really overwhelming when you first open cart on your Black Friday sale. Just know that's normal. And if you need to type messages like, thank you for your patience, we'll get to you as soon as possible, that's totally okay. Especially when they can see that it's like literally you as the owner of the shop who is administering the chat. So like, that was also really fun for my customers. They didn't think that I would still be as involved as I am in the chat because I'm not, I mean, you guys have seen on this channel, I'm really not involved in my shop at all at this point, other than just like paying contractor bills, things like that. But when it comes to chat, I still like getting in there and I still like having com uh, customer conversations. One, because it makes them feel really good and reassured about their purchase. And two, because I always gain valuable information and insight into our products and our sales process. So if there's ever any hiccups, I'm the first one to know during those big sale events. Okay, so another lesson that was hard learned is using ads the wrong way. And to be honest, we haven't done any paid advertising in the contract shop in almost two two years. So it's hard for me to talk about ads. Obviously I run them for this brand, this channel that you see and you know, my coaching, but that's totally separate from my online store. So of course I know about ads, but like I also don't run them in my store. So take this with a grain of salt is all I'm saying. We did used to run paid ads to the shop. And one of the biggest mistakes that we made was trying to advertise during Black Friday. So remember how I just talked about a fast growth event and how that should happen well in advance of your sale? Well, your ad should also be happening well in advance of your sales so that during your sale event, during Black Friday, the only ads that you're actually spending money on are retargeting ads. Those are gonna be the cheapest and basically it's just reminding people that your products exist, that they abandoned checkout, that they were interested in your products at one point, that your sale is ending, and we're not gonna go out and find cold traffic during our Black Friday sale. That should happen in October, in November, but not during the actual sale unless you want to spend a lot of money. For us, that was a huge mistake and a lot of money just down the drain because the ad cost was so high to acquire the customer that it didn't make sense to try to find new customers during the sale period. So if you are going to use ads, I just recommend that you use them well in advance of when everybody else is because the price is really high during those times. Another valuable lesson that we learned was having a great website does make a difference. But most importantly, what you wanna be looking for on a great website is functionality. And if you aren't sure if your site is functional, Either take a step back after you've edited it for a while and just look at how someone would use your website. And you can also use like the boyfriend or girlfriend test or whatever you wanna call it, the parent test. Basically put your website in front of someone who isn't really in your industry and doesn't really get what it is that you sell or do and just give them a simple task like add XYZ product to your cart and attempt to check out please. And just watch what happens, you know, see if it's easy for them because if it's not easy for them, if they can't quickly and easily find your product through a search feature or through the categories listed on your website, then it's most likely that your customers are not gonna be able to find that either. And that's a big problem on Black Friday where people are trying to add things to their cart really quickly. And if you're using doorbusters well, they're scrambling through your website and they wanna make sure this all happens fast so that they can get all the doorbusters. And if you're just frustrating them with a poorly performing website or a website that isn't functional, like, you know, they add it to cart and it just 
disappears or it just automatically deletes from the cart. Those are important things to know about in advance so that you don't run into those issues on Black Friday. That's a good way to make sure that your customers go and shop with your competition or never return to your site if they've had such a terrible experience in the first place. Everyone always asks me, and we actually have a custom site now for the contract shop. It was designed by Nicole Yang and it was coded by EtherCycle. So if you are interested in having a custom Shopify site, those are the people People that I worked with and I highly recommend them. I think they're probably pretty full, but you can always reach out and see what they're up to. I briefly mentioned it earlier, but a big part of our sales strategy during Black Friday is to have our affiliates selling our products for us because if you have more than just you selling it, that's obviously more sales that you're going to get to enjoy. So our affiliate sales typically account for 20 to 30% of our Black Friday total revenue. And that's pretty good considering that we didn't have to do anything to bring those sales in other than just get the affiliate set up, which is all automated. So we let our affiliates sell for us during Black Friday. Again, they do that ahead of time by attaching the cookie to the customer through the fast growth event and then the person buys later. And we always make sure that we have some sort of affiliate competition. And obviously the better the prizes in the competition, the more your affiliates are going to compete. But this is a game of diminishing returns. So for example, one of the early years, I think we had like a thousand dollar cash prize for the top affiliate and then like a $500 cash prize for the second runner up and then 250 for like the third runner up and it it was still profitable but it just like really hurt to send that money because it just it there were a lot of issues it was like the second runner up was like so far behind the first person and it was just and then this the third runner up was like right next to the second person to the point where we were like oh, we we got to wait until people you know the return periods over to see who wins so it was just kind of like really stressful. <laughs> and that's not how I like to run my businesses. And so what we've done instead is we've just kind of lowered the threshold for cash prizes. So our top cash prize now is $250 and then $100 and then $50. And that's still enough to incentivize the competition to happen, but it isn't as fierce. So we might think about going up to a little bit of a higher tier back to maybe 500, 250, and then 100 for those prizes. But you have to play around with that and find what's right for you. Having some sort of prize, not just like a competition for competition's sake, but just some small prize even is going to be more incentivizing for your affiliates to promote you during Black Friday than, you know, if you had nothing, if you were just like, hey, competition, but you know, we don't really know what you win. <laughs> <laughs> is that even a competition at that point? I don't know. Let's talk for a minute about pricing because this is critical. If you do need to make any price adjustments, you'll wanna make sure that you're doing that now, well in advance of Black Friday, because if you're waiting until the week before to jack up the price only to drop it with your sales during Black Friday, it could look really, I don't know, kind of sketchy to your customers. They are going to notice and you know they've likely had their eye on products in your shop for a while and they're not gonna be really happy basically paying the same price that they were before Black Friday, just it feeling like a discount because it like it technically was a discount, but like maybe it was $50 and then you jack the price up to a hundred and then you like dropped it by 50% for Black Friday. So it's still 50. Like don't play games with your customers like that. That's not fair to them and it's not fair to you. However, if you legitimately need to increase the prices, like we just increased the prices at the contract shop kind of quietly actually. And it wasn't by that much, but we hadn't raised prices in over almost almost four years, we hadn't raised prices. We raised the prices very slightly inside the shop and we did that in August after our mid-year sale, but well in advance of Black Friday because I felt like that was fair to our, you know, all the people on our team and then also our customers. Before we wrap up, there's something really critical I just wanna remind you about as you're going into Black Friday, especially if it's your first or second Black Friday and you're newer to this. Even if things aren't perfect, it doesn't matter because you can keep track of those lessons learned and implement them the next go around. In fact, that's how we've always done it. And imagine how much money we would have missed out on if we kept waiting for things to be perfect instead of just moving ahead with what we had and taking note of the lessons that we learned for the next year. Thanks for watching, I hope you have a great Black Black Friday and it would mean so much to me if you came back after Black Friday just kind of checked in and let me know how you did and what you were able to apply from these videos that I offer completely for free just for you. If you're ready to keep prepping for a successful Black Friday you'll want to check out the video that just popped up on your screen where I'm going to walk you through exactly how to do that and if this was helpful 
please make sure you're subscribed at this time because it makes such a big difference. And I put these videos out completely for free without any expectation, except that some of you are going to hit the subscribe button. And that means you. Bye everyone.